Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and today you guys are getting an upload a little bit a uh, little bit late in the evening this uh, this Sunday night if you guys are watching this video right when it goes up and um, I'm actually, let me go ahead and kind of just preface this car by, uh, or, or preface the build, yes it is a V12 swap and if you hate V12 swaps, you should probably click away right now. However, I have done a video on this car in proper V8 form, so I feel like I kind of, as long as I've covered this car in proper V8 form, I'm a, I think I'm allowed to go ahead and go nuts with it and put a V12 in it and go crazy. So, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the build. And by the way, this hood looks freaking cool. Like, it looks absolutely awesome. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's one of the best looking hoods or aftermarket hoods to be added to Forza in a while. Uh, this car really, really pulls it off. And um, I think, I don't know, it just it just really, really, really looks good. So the whole point of this car was to build a 1500 horsepower Camaro. I mean, there's literally no other way to describe it. It was to build a 1500 horsepower Camaro that was built to do one thing. Go in a freaking straight line. And uh, and that's what this car does. And it actually does a pretty good job of getting all 1,500 plus horsepower hooked up and put to the ground. Now, does it do it in the, in the first two gears? Not really. Does it do it in third? Somewhat, actually. It does it, it, does it better in third than you might expect. Uh, it does a pretty decent job of putting the power down in third gear. I would say as far as uh as I would say as far as really 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 high horsepower cars go, this one's actually really really composed and really controllable. Um and that's in part due to the suspension setup I put it on and that's also in part due to the fact that in part due to the fact that this car has ridiculously wide rear tires. I'm not sure if they're 325s or 335s. But they are up there. I mean, they are really, really, really up there. Also, now, as you guys are watching this video, I'm actually going over some of the GoPro footage that I uh, that I took at the track literally earlier today as I record this video. Um, I'm back home now, and I just got back from Atlanta Motorsports Park in the S2000, and uh, we did we had a bunch of great laps around the track got to take some passengers around as well, so it was super, super fun, and really, really cool, really enjoyable, it was nice to get the S2000 out there uh, on the stock suspension, just to baseline it and see how it felt, um, and really all that I had done to the car was a aggressive alignment, or, or at least aggressive enough for the stock, uh, stock hardware, we had the, um, Stock camber adjusters maxed out in the front. We had negative two degrees of camber in the front, and in the rear we were running negative one point seven uh, or thereabouts. And then we were running um, Motul RBF six hundred brake fluid, StopTech rotors, and Project Mew HD eight hundred pads. And then just a set of um, just a set of oh god! And and now I've gone and literally forgotten the tire I was running. Seriously, I looked at those tires a million freaking times today, and now I can't remember. Oh. RE71Rs, and I don't know how I for freaking forgot what tires they were. There are they're Bridgestone uh, RE71Rs, and they did awesome today. I only overheated them one time, and uh, and other than that, they did really really well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get back to the Forza build in just a second, but I did want to uh, want to let you guys know that tomorrow on Monday, you guys are gonna see some of the footage from the track, and I'm super super excited to show you guys that because I had an absolute blast, like one of the best times uh, I've had on track in uh, in a while. And uh, the next step for the S2000 is definitely coilovers, coilovers, and then wheels, uh, and then we can start moving ahead on the aero stuff as well as exhaust. So. I'm excited, I'm pumped, and I think it's going to be a really, really fun build. So, moving on into uh, the Camaro. Now, doing the tune setup, I pretty much, for the alignment, I set everything to neutral. Uh, I set absolutely everything to neutral, and, I mean, you don't really need this this build to turn. Um, every other one of my builds, it either needs to go around corners or it needs to slide, and, uh, and this needs to do neither of those. This just needs to go in a straight line as quickly as possible. And, uh, and like I said, the tune setup kind of reflects that. So, also, we have the diff maxed out. I mean, <laughs> we have the diff maxed out 100%, 100%. And, uh, I think that, uh, doing it that way 
doing it that way, I mean, you, you like, it's always locked. So you're never going to be spinning away any power whatsoever. So at this point, I was ready to go ahead and get to the highway. And uh, when I started testing this car out, this was literally, this was the first time I had ever driven it. Like, this was the first time I had built it. Um, first time I'd ever driven it. So I think a lot of the, a lot of the first reactions of mine when I uh, first drove this car were very much along the lines of, holy crap, that's faster than I expected it to be. Now, for top speed, I mean, it would do 267. I really, really, really tried to stretch it to 268. I really did, and uh, it was really close, but it, like, god, I don't know if it didn't have enough power or if the aerodynamics were off. I mean, it's a, Camaro, it's a Camaro, so it doesn't really have the greatest aerodynamics in the world anyway. But with that being said, it's definitely not a, you know, uh, like a, a terrible freaking brick of a car. I mean, it is sort of a brick, but it's not th that bad. They have come a long way from what Camaros used to be. Um, but until your tires warm up, you will get a little bit of wheel spin through third, and then you will hook up in fourth. Um, and the power when it comes in is absolutely savage. It is absolutely savage. Uh, that, that, that's the only way I know how to describe it. This thing is an absolute straight line monster. And uh, there are definitely a lot of built supercars that I would put this thing up against. Also, this thing loves brake boosting. If you brake boost in this car, and then you just let off the brake and floor the throttle, you will take off into oblivion. I mean, this thing is so fast. It is warp speed fast. It is absolutely not so fast. And I know I keep saying it's fast, but it is. I mean, it's it it is uh, it's really 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 quick. And I think that for a lot of different types of uh, for a lot of different types of uh, of cars, this is definitely like in terms of you know V12 swapped muscle cars. This is fast. I mean, I know there are ones that are faster. But especially for for a lot of the newer muscle cars, this one's definitely up there as far as speed goes. And I think it's weight. On one hand, the weight starts to it, the weight does hold it back a little bit. But on the other hand, the weight also helps it hook the power up. So there's like an, another case of the AI did, or AI driver charge just barreling into you. But um, back to uh, the topic at hand, this car I think its weight somewhat con contributes. To, uh, to how stable it is sometimes, and, or well, most of the time. It's actually a very, very, very stable car, and it's really quick and smooth to change direction, even at like 250 plus miles an hour, which is really insane for a chunk of V8, well, not even V8 anymore, but just a chunk of um, American muscle. I mean, really, that's what this car is. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people would argue, oh, it's not American muscle anymore. You put a V12 in it. Oh. But it's still a Camaro. I, I mean, you put a v in my view, you put a V12 in a Camaro, and it's still a Camaro. It's just a Camaro with a V12 engine with turbos strapped to it. I mean, <laughs> what, what, there's, there's nothing else more to it than that. It's still a Camaro to me. That's just like people get in that argument of like, you know, like, oh, you put an LS in an RX-7. It's not an RX-7 anymore. It's an RX-7. It's just an RX-7 with an LS in it. And I know I'm going to make all the Rotary fanboys really, 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 really mad with that comment. But I think, to me, a car is always going to retain its personality and its character that is, you know, inherent in that that body, that shape. It's very... It'll, it'll always be iconic. I mean, like, for example, like an S2000 with a 2J in it is still an S2000. I mean, it might go like a Supra and sound like a Supra, but it's still an S2000. It just is an S2000 with a 2J. So I think that that's a lot of, like, that's part of what people miss sometimes when they uh, when, when they see engine swaps and then they get upset over, like, oh, how could you put that in this car? How could you put this in that car, you know? And I also think that different cars are, I mean, like, some, to a lot of people, there are some cars that are perfectly acceptable to swap, and there are other cars that are, like, not okay to swap at all. I mean, like, another another example, we go back to the RX-7s again. It's a perfect example because, the. by the way, that gap was so freaking close. Like, boom, that was just nuts. Uh, but anyways, back to the RX-7s, a lot of people think that, well, you can swap any engine you want into a Miata, but you better not touch the rotary in an RX-7. You better not swap anything else into that RX-7 because that's sacrilege. And I disagree partially. 
if you're trying to keep the all original feel of an RX-7, leave the rotary in it. If you like rotary engines, leave the rotary in it. But if you want to use the RX-7 as a platform for a build for whatever purpose, be it circuit or drift or drag or, or whatever it is, you have a variety of options. You could build a rotary. You could put a V8 in the car. You could put a number of other engines into the car. And because really, when you look at a car in terms of not only its engine, but its chassis, that's when engine options really start to open up. I mean, my, one of my personal favorite engine swaps of all time is the Miata with a Honda K-Series. The Miata with a Honda K-Series is almost the perfect swap because you get way more power, like, sorry to, like, I'm not, uh, I'm not attacking, I'm not attacking Miatas and I'm not attacking Miata engines, but the, Hon the Honda K-Series, is there's just way more to it than a, you know, than a mid-90s Mazda 1.8 liter. There just is. But uh, I think also, too, I, I would love to see, a, like, a first or second gen Miata with a Honda F-Series, either an F-20 or an F-22, like you would see in an S-2000. But, uh, but that's just, again, that's just me. I, w I think it would be a really cool uh, a swap to see. I don't know what that was, but um, like I said, I think it would be a really cool swap to see. And um, I don't know if anyone's done it. I may actually, after I am done with this video, I might go and look it up and see if anybody's done it. But, um, but anyways, that has been the build of this Camaro. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comments down below what you guys thought of it. And if you are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe for more daily videos like this one. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later, and I hope you guys enjoyed.